when I woke up this morning, I, um, and in my quiet time, when I sat down just to have my quiet time with the Lord, I, my heart was just crying out for Jesus. I just, I just wanted to be close to Him, to know Him. And uh, this song came to my heart. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. Jesus, you can have all this world. Give me Jesus. And when I am alone, oh, and when I am alone, and when I Sing that one more time. Jesus, what a wonder you are. So good. 
Amen. Just give me Jesus, right? Um, unfortunately, myself gets in the way of lot, uh, that a lot. I don't know about you. This morning, we're continuing in Proverbs and um, two different little topics that, that Solomon hits on here. Remember, the, the Proverbs are principles or things to live by, observations that Solomon has made in life. And he begins in verse 6. Uh, he says, Go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. <laughs> I like that. Go to the ant, O sluggard. And here he's speaking to, um, speaking of persons that he would compare to a sluggard. You know what a sluggard does. They just kind of mope around. They get slime everywhere. And um, they're just a sluggard. He says, go to the ant. Consider the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, O oh sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? And so he's saying, sluggard, compare yourself to the ant. Look how the ant goes and uh, they, the ant goes and gets its bread in the summer, uh, meaning preparing it for storing it up in the winter. And at harvest time, the, the ant will go out. In other words, when there's opportunity, when there's time there, the ant is diligent to go and work. And sluggard, how long will you sleep there? He's talking about a lazy person. He's talking about a person um, that, that just will not, who's able-bodied, who's capable, just will not go out and, and work. And comparing that to the sluggard, then he says in verse 10, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and won't like an armed man. The slugger says, you know, I'll just take a little sleep here. Uh, I, I, I won't go out and, and do that to provide for myself. I'm just going to kick back. I'm going to fold my hands. When I read this this morning, I thought, hmm, because I've gotten in the habit now as I've aged a little bit that I need a little afternoon nap. But that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about the person that while they're able-bodied, while they're capable, they just won't go out and work. In other words, they have a poor work ethic. You know, we have the misconception about work, that work is a result of the fall, the result of sin. But I'm reminded that work was given to Adam and Eve prior to their sin. God has created us in his image, and, and God is a, is a creative, God is a working God. He who watches over you neither sleeps nor slumbers. And work has really been given to us as a gift. There's a satisfaction in work. Yes, there can be the burdens of work, and that's the consequences of sin, uh, where man will work by the sweat of his brow, thorns and thistles now. And so there are always complications. There are always things we deal with in work. But here he says, the lazy person, the person who won't go out, who's able-bodied but will not work, ruin is certainly going to come to their door. Sooner or later, it's going to catch up with them. You know, Paul speaks of work, and he says this in one of his letters, that, um, that the person who won't work, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, he won't eat. And so the, the principle there the, the, that Paul gives is that if one... If one won't work, they're not going to eat. There's not going to be food there for them. And there's a principle that he goes on to give that when we enable someone by continuing to give to them, continuing to, um, to provide for all of their needs when they're not willing to work, we're really harming them in the long run. Paul also speaks to uh, of, of young women in one of his letters who are young widowed. They, he says when they, when they don't have productive things to do with their hands, when, when they're not occupied with things, they become gossips and they go from house to house gossiping. Uh, my dad used to always make this statement. He would say, you know, a poor man can keep his grass cut. And what he meant by that was that, um, well, just what he said, a poor man can keep his grass cut. In other words, it's a lazy man who won't get out and cut his grass. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of means, but, but there's a value there in work. I can remember one time when I was a little boy in the back of my dad's truck, and my cousins and I were, were riding down the dirt road that we lived on, 
and there were some men on the side of the road and and they were they were digging out the the um the the gullies on the side of the road uh digging the dirt out of them and 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 so that the water would run through and i remember laughing and making fun of those men who were out digging a ditch and my dad pulled the truck over uh, pulled me out of the back of the truck and wore my bottom end out and he said i don't care what a man does there's value in work and don't you ever criticize a man for what he does for work and boy i never will forget that and so regardless of what the vocation is that the person occupies himself with it's an honorable thing to work solomon goes on in the next topic that we're going to kind of look at briefly this morning he goes on in verse 12 talking about a worthless person he says a worthless person a wicked man goes about with crooked speech he winks with his eyes and signals with his feet and points with his finger. With perverted heart, he devises evil, continually sowing discord. Therefore, calamity will come upon him suddenly. In a moment, he will be broken beyond healing. And so here's a second type of person that Solomon has observed, that calamity will come in their life. The first one was a slugger, the one who won't work. Sooner or later, uh, it, it's going to come down on them. The second type of person here that Solomon warns us against not to be, and I would say not to associate with either, he says that in other places in the proverb, is the one who goes about sowing discord. The one who goes about gossiping about others, gossiping about an organization, uh, just trying to sow discord. And he equates this person to an evil person. Listen to what he says. He says, with a perverted Heart, they devise evil. They're continually sowing discord. Evil. That's an evil person. We don't think of an evil person very often as one who sows discord. But the consequences of one sowing discord bring about all manners of hurt and harm and damage, particularly in relationships. And so I, you know, through the years being a pastor, I've, I've come into a lot of different times where people sow discord. And, and they're just evil-hearted people. Most of the time, they're very discontent with themselves, and, and they just try to make trouble. Um, every church I've been in, I've known people who have sown discord. Uh, and I've had to learn through the years that while, yes, we love, but we've got to confront that kind of person and correct them. And I'm sure you've seen people that sow discord as well. They go around and they just nitpick everything and they talk to other people. You, f you find them gathering in the lobby. You find them gathering at the back of the sanctuary. You find them being quiet all of a sudden when you may walk up to them. They're sowing discord. And here Solomon says that's an evil person. Um, what we have to do is lovingly confront that and not be a party to that. What I've learned through the years about people that sow discord, maybe gossip about others or gossip about things, I've learned this, that if they want to bend my ear and gossip about somebody else to me, I can almost take it to the bank that if they'll gossip with me about somebody else or they'll gossip with you about somebody else, most likely they're gossiping about you to somebody else as well. Does that make sense? They, that's in their nature. They, they just love doing it. And so uh, Solomon's going to encourage us, exhort us a lot regarding the tongue, and especially in this area of gossip or sowing discord. Let me encourage you not to be a party to that. Maybe you're convicted this morning of hearing that, that, that you've been a gossip. Um, confess it, repent, and there may be some... some uh, some healing that you might need to do with following up with others and confessing that to them as well. Let's not allow the enemy to sow discord within the body. Let's not allow the enemy to sow discord within our families. It happens within families too, right? Um, let's not be a party to that. Um, that just does not please the Spirit of God, and it grieves the heart of God. I pray the Lord blesses you today. I pray he keeps you. Would you take these two things and consider your ways and, and consider others' ways? 
that these two things that Solomon speaks about will bring ruin and destruction, not only in our lives, but in the lives of others. That is being a sluggard, being lazy, and sowing discord and gossiping about others. Uh, I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you, that his face shines upon you. I look forward to being with you tomorrow morning, uh, daily in the word. Hit that share button, uh, encourage others to be a part of it. And men, tonight, either through Facebook, engage in our man church tonight, or in person, engage in man church tonight. I think God has a word for us tonight, and it's going to be challenging for us men. But iron sharpens iron. And God's called us to be godly men, men who lead, uh, men who take responsibility in our homes, in our family, in our community. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Have a great day.